Welcome back everybody. My name is Emmy and this is my channel Frugal Money Saver. How is everyone doing? We are in the middle of a heat wave here and guess what? You won't hear me complain. Love, love, love the warm weather. Now you're going to hear me complain a little bit when it snows and cold and we have the blizzard, but when it's like this, I'm loving it. So I am just so grateful and happy you are here. I want to say a special welcome to all my new subscribers. I cannot tell you how blessed Paul and I are to have you here. Um, and the reason I know a lot of you are here is because of a very, very special woman. And that is Granny from Mornings with Granny. Her channel is an amazing channel. Talk about random acts of kindness. She gave me a shout out on her channel. And for a channel such as Granny's to do that for a smaller channel like mine, that is just beyond kind. Um, she has an amazing channel. If you are not subscribed to Mornings with Granny, I will link her down below in my description box. Go over, check out her channel, tell her that Emmy from Frugal Money Saver sent you, and subscribe. She has got the most down-home, wonderful channel. She is frugal. She is creative. Um, she's just somebody you want around you all the time. That's really how I feel. She is just a breath of fresh air. So head on over there. She is um, just wonderful. So let me tell you a little bit about today's video. This is something we do all the time. We cook a chicken and we eat off of it for several meals. And I thought that would be a really neat video to show you how we do it, the recipes we make. Now, these are just some of them, um, but you can be creative. You can be as creative as you want. Um, one of the recipes before I get any kind of what um, is a Cajun recipe, but it's not Cajun in the way a true Cajun would make it. I should have guessed called it spicy chicken and pasta, but <laughs> just so you know, um, it is delicious and you can control the heat so it doesn't have to be spicy at all, but it is really yummy. So this is just a compilation of different meals that you can make from one chicken. It's super frugal, it's tasty, it's money-saving, economical, um, just fits the bill all the way around. And you do not have to roast the chicken. I show my chicken roasted and I don't go into depth on how I roast it because I did a whole video on that back in December. And what I will do is link that video also in the comments section below. So just go there and you can see from beginning to end how I roast my chicken. But if you don't want to roast the chicken, you can barbecue it, you can put it in your crock pot for the day, whatever works for you. But basically you want to start with one whole cooked chicken. So that's really all there is to it. All the recipes will be down below in the comments section. And I hope you enjoy this. Here's the chicken I'm using. It is a Purdue whole young chicken. So I paid $1.49 a pound. It was about five and a half pounds, so it ended up coming to $8.28. I go with the whole young chickens instead of the oven roasters because I just wonder how they get the breasts of the chicken so big. That kind of makes me a little nervous. So I like to go with just the fresh whole young chickens. So I'm going to roast this. I will link a video down below that explains in detail how I roast my chickens. Here's the bag of innards that came with the chicken. I pulled it out of the cavity. We're gonna need this when we make our stock. So we've got a neck. I'm just gonna put it here. What I will not put in is the liver. I don't put liver in my soup stock because it makes it bitter. I find it does. And any fat I get off of this will 
go into the bag with these and then I will freeze it. So the chicken is completely roasted. It looks so good. So there is the drippings underneath and I always put some vegetables under. So what we'll do tonight is Paul will probably have a leg and a thigh and I'll do the two wings and maybe a piece of breast you might have Paul, but we'll have a little bit of the chicken for dinner with um, mashed potatoes and a green vegetable. This is a ton of flavor down here, but we don't want all that grease. I mean, some people love chicken grease. I'm not a fan of grease, <laughs> but it does pack flavor. So I am gonna put it in my separator. Oh, sorry about that. Are you getting that pole or am I in your way? Uh, yeah, it's going in. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So now you can see the fat rose to the top. So what I'm going to do is drain that out. So what I did, here is all that delectable broth. I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to actually just deglaze this pan. This is a ton of flavor. Look at this flavor right here. And we're going to add this to our chicken noodle soup at the end. So just take this put it in the fridge and um, let it set until we need it. So it's day two, meal two of our four meals from one chicken. Paul is cutting off one side of the breast for me and we're going to make it into bite-sized pieces. So we are going to make creamy Cajun pasta with chicken today. Now, the chicken is cut up, we cubed. Look at all the meat off of this breast. The first thing I'm going to do is put in a teaspoon, a little less than a teaspoon, of smoked paprika. You can use regular paprika if you don't have it. Always use what you have. Um, I'm gonna put in um, about a half a teaspoon of garlic, roughly. And we're going to do about a half a teaspoon of onion. And I am going to grate some black pepper. But you can make it as hot as you want. I'm going to put in a little bit of salt. Just like that. And then I'm going to do the cayenne pepper. I am literally going to just put a splash of that just for a little kick. My husband's not a big fan. And I'm just going to mix this all around. Get all those good seasonings on there. And that's going to coat the chicken and give it that amazing flavor. So I melted a teaspoon of butter in my saute pan. And now to that, I'm going to add about a half of a chopped onion. And I'm just going to saute this until it gets nice and soft. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. Okay, so they're nice and soft. They're almost translucent. I am going to add one cup chicken broth. I use uh, low sodium. One cup of water and about a half a cup of tomato sauce. You can use, if you don't wanna to use tomato sauce, you can use diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, uh, whatever you want. Is now we're going to take our chicken and add that in as well. All those delicious flavorings and seasonings are gonna go in there. And what we're gonna do now is bring this to a boil. I'm going to cover it and let it come to a boil. This is boiling beautifully. Oh my goodness, I can smell the smoked paprika. Now what I'm going to do is I have a half a pound of angel hair pasta that I'm going to break in half. Can I do it? Yes. Now I would advise you to use angel hair because angel hair cooks quickly. So I put this in 
angel hair pasta cooks mm, roughly in three minutes so we are going to cover this make sure if it looks like you need a little more liquid add a little bit more broth you want this covered we're going to lower the heat and then we're going to let this simmer for about three minutes so make sure you lower your heat if you need a little bit more liquid add a little bit more broth this is boiling beautiful. Every once in a while, give it a little stir. And then put the cover on. Like I said, if you need to add a little bit, if you think it's looking a little dry, please add about a half a cup of water or broth more. Oh my goodness, what a smell. All right, three minutes is up and I'm turning the heat off. You see how it absorbed the moisture? Oh my goodness, look at this. This would, I hope I'm not steaming up the camera too bad, this would serve a family of four um, comfortably. And that's only using one breast. Uh, serve this with a salad and you are good to go. Now, I'm going to add a quarter cup of heavy cream and I'm adding one tablespoon of cream cheese. This is what sends it over the edge. So I'm gonna cover this. The heat is off on this. So what I'm going to do to make this melt is just cover it for about a minute or two, and then we'll check it. Here it is, oh my goodness, you have to smell this. So what we're going to do is just plate this up. Look at how much it made. So um, if you have a smaller family, this will um, definitely last you for a couple of lunches and dinner, I would think. Delicious, creamy. Again, you adjust the heat. Serve it with a green salad or maybe some green vegetable of your choice, maybe some broccoli on the side or something like that. You have a delicious, complete meal. So this is meal two. Welcome to day three and recipe three. We are gonna do recipe three and four together today because it's been three days since we cooked the chicken. Uh, we ate it roasted, then we did the second day, was the Cajun chicken pasta, and now here we are on the third day. So Paul is cutting up the second breast, and then I still have a thigh and a leg left, and we're gonna take that thigh and the leg, we're gonna take the carcass, and we are going to make stock with it. We're gonna make broth for chicken noodle soup, and we're going to freeze that. And then we can make the chicken noodle soup or chicken rice soup whenever we want. First thing I did was this is a two quart corning ware and I greased the inside. Then I'm taking all of the cubed chicken, which is a whole nother breast, and I'm putting that in there. And what we're doing with this is we're making a meal stretch by using potatoes. Um, last night was pasta to keep it economical. Now I'm going to add to this a can of cream style corn. And if you have homemade, even better, but I don't. And then now what this is gonna do is just make the chicken, it's almost gonna make like a gravy over the chicken. When it heats up, it's gonna melt into that and it, it's really delicious. And then what we did was we mashed up a bunch of potatoes. How many is this, Paul, about five? No, four. Four potatoes. Four, you know, medium size. And we're just gonna spread this out. Oh my goodness. This is all there is to it. And you make the mashed potatoes the way you want, you know, season them the way that you would want to season them. This makes a great one pot meal. It's filling and it's hearty. Okay. And you can't go wrong with chicken and potatoes, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some cheddar and, oops, and we're gonna just grate a little cheddar on top. And again, when you do something like this, it just sends it over the edge just a little bit. 
that's all there is to this. So it's almost like a shepherd's pie that you would make with ground beef, only you're using chicken. So I'm gonna pop this in a 400 oven, 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. What you wanna see is just make sure it's heated through. So that's all there is to it. And I'm telling you, this is a scrumptious meal. Well, we let ours get a little brown and crispy on top, but you certainly don't have to do it this way. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. It's hot all the way through. Again, you don't have to uh, get the cheese as crispy as we did, but look at that. Now, pair it with a green vegetable or a salad and you are good to go. And look how much, that's one serving and look how much is left. So definitely a really frugal, good, economical meal. So this is our fourth meal. I told you after the third day, um, that is it on the chicken. You either need to freeze it or use it that day. So what I did was I was not ready to make the chicken soup. So I froze the carcass and I had also a thigh and like part of a, of a leg, I guess, left. So that's all going to go into my soup pot. I'm going to be making it in a crock pot. Um, so you can make it on the stove, wherever you prefer, but I like the crock pot because I'm home and it can simmer all day. So I am going to take this carcass with all its meat and just put it in. Okay, and then in this bag, remember when I told you when we first cleaned the chicken, I froze skin and I froze the neck and the heart of the chicken. So this was just leftover skin that I pulled off before I roasted it and I froze all this too. You have to be very careful with chicken. You want to freeze everything right away. So that is going to go in as well. Now, on this plate, I have like three cut up carrots. I have a tomato that was starting to get a little funny, so I cut that up. Um, just a bunch of celery, uh, a small onion all cut up, and two cloves of garlic. So I'm just gonna add that in as well. And then I'm gonna cover that with water. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot to add this. This was in the freezer too. Do you remember at the beginning when we made the roasted chicken? I deglazed the bottom of the pan with the chicken, um, it had the chicken fat in it and I drained it out and then I deglazed the pan. This has got to go in this soup. Um, so I am gonna add this. Do you know the flavor this is gonna pack? So there you go, that's in there, that'll defrost and oh my goodness, what a flavor. So I covered everything with water and the bones are gonna to start to cook down. And once that happens, then everything will even condense more. Why don't I add chicken broth to my chicken stock? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I, I just, why add chicken stock to chicken soup? I'm making chicken stock. Does that make sense? So, so I'm just gonna push this all in Oh, this is going to be so good. We're supposed to be getting a tropical storm today. So actually, this is going to be perfect for tonight. Now I'm just going to cover this and I am going to let it cook for several hours. Um, if you do it on low, probably like eight hours. If you do it on high, you know, check it on four to five hours. But um, chicken stock cooked this way, uh, slow and low just comes out so well. Okay, so I'm gonna cover it and we're good to go. This cooked the better part of the day in the crock pot, but basically once it's cooked, strain it, remove all the bones, the fat, the carcass, you will have broth and you will have meat left after you pick through it. So what I'm going to do is now put this in the refrigerator for a couple of hours so the fat rises and I'll skim that off. And then I did separate and keep all that meat, which will be added in. I let the broth cool. And now I know a lot of you have said to me before, leave the chicken fat on, it's good for you. But I do take the majority of my chicken fat off. Um, it's just, 
something we do. I leave a little bit for flavor, but you can see how gelatin this, this is, and that is a really good stock. You see that? It's almost like a gelatin. So I am excited. And look, everybody's gonna be happy. I did leave some fat in. So what we did is we cut up some fresh carrot, some celery, and we like potato once in a while in our um, chicken noodle soup. And then I have the leftover meat right here that I took off when I strained it. Make sure you strain it and get all the bones and the skin out of it. And then this way you have just a delectable soup. Oh, and look at my basil. I just harvested some more. I have so much this year. It's doing so beautifully. Okay, now I'm going to put the broth, bring it to a boil, and then I'm going to add the vegetables. And then the last um, few minutes, I'll add the meat because it is already cooked. And I just want to keep that flavor. So I don't want to overcook that meat any more than it already is. So I'm going to head do that, and then I will show you. I just lightly started heating the soup and you can see that that gelatin like texture is now gone and it's a smooth stock. That gelatin mixture, I should have said earlier when I was showing it to you, is actually the collagen from the bones. And you know that is a rich, hearty stock when you see your broth thick like that. That is actually the collagen being removed from the bones of the chicken. So I think this is gonna be an extra special good soup tonight. The stock came to a boil and we added our vegetables and now I'm gonna lower the heat and I'm gonna cook it for maybe 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender. So I'm gonna take the noodles and add it in. Now sometimes we do the noodles separately. The egg noodles, um, we'll cook them separately and add them after. But um, we're going to do it tonight because there's a lot of broth in here. So um, I think I've told you this before. My husband is not a huge fan of broth, are you, Paul? Not really, no. I mean, he'll eat it. He's really good about it. I like about it more hearty. Right. So when we add it, you know it's going to absorb a lot of the liquid, which is pretty okay with him. So it almost comes out like a stew. But by all means, if you want to keep that broth really brothy, then cook your pasta or your rice separately and then add it to the broth. And I'm also going to now to take all that wonderful chicken that we had left that I went through with a fine tooth comb to make sure there were no bones because you don't want to put bones in someone's chicken soup. And there we go. And now I'm just going to cook this for the remainder seven minutes. And uh, that's how long the noodles need to cook. And then we are ready to eat. Meal number four is done. Look at the color of that broth. It is so rich and deep. And that's because we use the deglazing from the original roast chicken. And here we have just some simple cheese toast with it. There is nothing better than a bowl of soup any time of the year. And this looks amazing. I hope that was as fun for you as it was for us. We filmed it over several days. So having these meals um, so easy to put together after cooking that chicken, I think is just a blessing. So I hope this was encouraging to you. Again, if you are not subscribed to Mornings with Granny, head on over to her channel. The link is down below. Tell her Emmy sent you, and I'm telling you, you will love her channel. So until our next video, you know we love you. We wish you blessings. Stay well, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.